Everyone, this is Frank DeMora. I'm bringing you more news, showing you how God's words are coming to pass in these last days. So let me get right into it. This is the second YouTube video for September the 4th, 2012. And before I go there, I just want to let everybody know that's new, who just found my site, uh, my YouTube channel, you can go to my website, which is, of course, BibleProphecyMan.com, and when you're there, you'll see the cover of my book, and uh, the link will take you right to it. You can download the book today for free. So let's get right into the prophecy. And again, I'm going to be dealing with Israel. All of the news that you're going to be seeing here now deals with Israel, the nation that God chose to sanctify, to show, to sanctify his name. He chose this little tiny nation the size of New Jersey to show and demonstrate that he is in control of this world. And no one is going to rip the Jews or the nation of Israel out of the Lord's hands. All prophecy about Jerusalem, all prophecy about the Jews in Israel will be fulfilled exactly how the Lord had told us. Now there are events that are going to take place before the Lord comes back and I'm showing you the, the road leading to those prophecies and this one is the first, Psalm 83. For you new people just discovered my site, the names of the nations that are going to attack Israel soon are given here in this photo. You'll see 1 through 10 on the left hand side, it's all the Old Testament names, but on the right hand side you will see that they are the modern day names. So when you see names like the Hezbollah and the Palestinians and uh, Lebanon and Syria and Jordan and Saudi Arabia and Iraq, you'll understand that these are the nations that the Lord said are going to come against Israel. And what does he tell us? Well it says that these nations will come together and they're going to have uh, take this crafty counsel against thy people, in other words, the people of Israel, the Jews. And so these nations are going to come together, devise a plan, saying we're going to wipe Israel off the map, essentially is what we're seeing. And of course the news does show us that that's exactly what's taking place. Now the second war which hasn't taken place, obviously, because Psalm 83 hasn't taken place yet will be the Ezekiel War of which Russia is going to be playing a, a major role in that war and of course Iran is going to be their major ally in this war along with Libya and Turkey and you can see the the upheaval that has been going through the nations that are listed in all of these prophecies both the Psalm and the Ezekiel War and of course I'm trying to tell the people to watch the Middle East Keep your eyes on Israel because we know that the final prophecies are going to fulfill the Daniel's prophecy that you see in the book of Daniel where the Lord showed us in the book of Daniel that God is going to use and work um, for 490 years. He was going to deal with the nation of Israel and how in the last days there would be the last portion of this 490 years would end up being the seven years and that would be uh, the tribulation period. So we've already seen uh, most of these years have passed already and the time clock stopped when Jesus was crucified. We know that the time clock to dealing with the nation of Israel again will begin when we see uh, this Antichrist coming out and of course the rapture of the church is going to take place and then the seven year period will begin. So all of the prophecies that we see, keep your eyes on the Middle East because most of them are going to be coming from the Middle East dealing with the nation of Israel. And so this is one of the reasons why everybody who loves the Lord should be standing behind Israel because God is dealing and standing behind Israel. Now keep this in mind now that I said that because prophecy will be fulfilled that just because they're Jews doesn't mean that these people have this uh, this free ticket into, into heaven. We know that's not the case because Jesus told us that nobody goes to the Father unless it's through the Son, Jesus Christ. In other words, unless you receive Jesus, you, you can't go into heaven. Now if you have an issue with that, your issue is not with Frank DeMora, it's with Jesus Christ because he is the one who said it. But we are supposed to 
as Christians, we're supposed to understand how God has chosen the Jews to deal with the Jews to eventually let them understand and they will see, as it says in Zechariah, that they will know that the Messiah that they crucified was really their Messiah. And so we have to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, pray for the nation of Israel and the Jews, that their eyes would be open. We know that many will come to the Lord before the rapture of the church. And so this is a blessing. But the Jews who rejected Jesus Christ, those who re keep rejecting Jesus Christ, will also have to go through the tribulation period, just like anybody else who refuses the message. So in this... In these prophecies, now I want to show you that the first article, Nasserel, uh, we can put a real hurting on Israel. And this is the news that you'll see once you go to the my site. You'll be able to click for all the links that I'm giving to you. Now, Nasserel is the, one of the leaders there who have been stating, just like it says in the prophecy here, that they're going to wipe out Israel, that her face or the nation isn't even recognized anymore. It says this, And they shall say, Come, let us cut them off of being a nation, that the name of Israel may, may be no more in remembrance. And of course, Nasserel is one of the people saying this. So that part of the prophecy is already fulfilled. So look at what it says. And while Israel and the USA monitor events in Syria, of course, Syria is also mentioned in the Psalm 83 war. We know that the outcome of what's going on in Syria right now will be a fulfillment of Isaiah chapter 17 verse 1 and also Jeremiah chapter uh, 49 verses 24 through 27. Now, the events in Syria sharing concerns over Damascus. The chemical weaponry. Hezbollah leader uh, Shaikh Nasserel, this is his, this is the uh, again one of the major players in the Middle East uh, on Monday night, the eve of, this is when he announced that he does not need a uh, or plan to attack Israel with these chemical weapons, as you can see here in this article. But it he will suffice with missiles. In other words, he is going to unleash missiles on Israel. It's not, are they, or maybe... It's a given. It's going to happen because we know that the Hezbollah are mentioned in that Psalm 83. And this is why one of their main leaders is saying exactly what the Lord told us about wiping Israel off. This is what they were going to say, and this is, he's actually fulfilling the prophecies. So they are definitely going to send these missiles, and they have thousands of uh, maybe uh, 50, 60,000 of these missiles waiting to strike Israel. Now speaking to the Lebanese, of course Lebanon is mentioned in the Psalm 83. Speaking to the Lebanese television or TV, he stated that he does not have chemical weapons and would not use them, but stressed that he can still cause significant harm to Israel. And so if you hear the leader who is the head of one of the nations that are listed there saying that he's going to go to try to take out Israel, why wouldn't you believe in what the Lord has for us in his word when he tells us and shows us exactly what's going to happen? Here you go, the Hezbollah. Number five, the modern-day northern Lebanese. You have the Hezbollah. Number nine here, you'll see southern Le Lebanon, the Lebanese, and then Assyria which is modern-day Syria. So news events that are very, very significant, especially if you don't know Bible prophecy and you couldn't make those connections. And that's what this ministry is about, showing you that God's words are coming to pass. Now here's another one, another article. It says, Senior officials in the Obama administration sent a message to Tehran, which is the capital of Iran, in the past few days, according to which the U.S. does not intend to join Israel's side if it decides to attack the Iranian nuclear installations on its own, reports from this uh, newspaper that comes out from the Middle East. It says, according to the report, the U.S. sent a message to Iran in order to avoid an Iranian response, military response that would target U.S. installations in the Gulf region. Of course, I've been warning you that Barack Obama has put a knife in Israel's back where at one side of his mouth he's saying that they're friends, he's going to protect them, and the other side he's doing the exact opposite. 
Um, and uh, so he can definitely cannot be trusted. And why am I giving you this information? Because when you look down, let me scroll down here, you'll see one of the prophecies is that Israel was going to be alone in the last days when everybody came against them. Look at this, Zechariah 12.3. And in that day I will make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. All that burden themselves will be cut in pieces, though all the people of the earth are gathered together against it. It means everybody, all right? So this is one of the one of the uh, the roads that are leading when you see Obama is making these statements that he is not going to come to Israel's aid. Well, this is old news for those who know what the Lord showed us in the book of Zechariah because this is exactly what we were told that everybody and that would include the United States because there are those people who think that the United States will never abandon Israel but this is the word of the Lord everybody is going to come against Israel and we see that Barack Obama is the man who has definitely accelerated the United States uh, the distance from the United States and Israel that friendship that we've had so many years so let me go now to the the next report and of course before I get there I'm gonna tie in what's going on because Paul wrote to us and said this in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verses 3 and 4 for when they shall say peace and safety then sudden destruction come upon them as is travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape but ye brethren are not in the darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief right so what we know is during the time that Israel would be calling for the peace and safety we know that some major uh, problems will happen the sudden destruction you might as well just say war because that's what happens so we know that there's going to be a war destruction if you will that will take place while they're calling for peace and safety now the newest headline that just came out headline PLO warns an unprecedented threat to a two-state solution and of course we know that uh, Abbas who is the leader of the Palestinian which is mentioned in the Psalm 83 war to Palestinians they are um, their leader is trying to split up Israel into two and also make Jerusalem the capital to the new Palestinian state and of course when you do this you end up getting under the curse of God you'll see that in Joel chapter 3 anybody who tries to divide his land so it says the PLO leadership warned Tuesday that Israeli policies in Jerusalem and the West Bank pose an unprecedented and serious threat in the short term to a two-state solution and that's exactly what I was just telling you because he wants to separate and divide Israel. Now the warning was issued following a lengthy meeting of the PLO Executive Committee headed by the Palestinian Authority President Hamad Abbas in Ramallah. So we have, they're still struggling. The peace process has been uh, halted for the last almost four years now. And we know that there's been a lot of activity in the Middle East between Israel uh, responding to missiles that have been shown uh, or uh, launched into Israel and I'm going to show you a little bit of that news as we go on but this just shows you the these battles these incidents that are going back and forth uh, they are going to end up causing the major war or they're going to at least uh, add to how this war will begin now, the, the other headline that I want to show you today, and obviously, I'm just going to give you the link. You can read the entire articles there. But this headline says that uh, why Israel is so anxious over Iran. And, of course, Iran is uh, the, the major player, along with Russia, in the Ezekiel War. And I believe, and I've been saying this for a long time, I believe that Israel is going to hit Iran's nuclear facilities and when that happens there will be a response from the Islamic uh, brothers of the border Israel and when I mean that I mean all the nations in the Psalm 83 war and then they may take uh, the, that opportunity uh, to try to wipe out Israel. 
But let me go right to this article, why Israel is so anxious here. Just pull that up for you and you can see it here. It says a growing number of Israeli and American commentators are accusing Israeli government of exaggerating the Iranian threat or at least of pushing the international community into a premature or unnecessary conflict with Iran. Now keep, keep that in mind because in Matthew chapter 24 the Lord told us you're going to hear wars and rumors of wars. And of course, almost every single day we're hearing about this rumor of a war between Israel and Iran. It says, but just last week, the International Atomic Agency issued a report that very much legitimized Israel's concerns and sense of urgency. It says in the report that A or the IAEA noted that noted that Iran had now installed no fewer than 2,140 centrifuges at its main underground uranium uh, enrichment facility, given the ability to produce 200 kilograms, about 440 pounds, of weapons-grade uranium each year. Of course, five years ago, I said that Iran will never stop giving their giving uh, or working for the nuclear weapon and that's exactly what's happening because this man thinks that he has been he was born to bring this war against Israel which will bring out what he believes is his savior who will go in and destroy Israel so it looks like this guy is definitely going to be play a major role in fulfilling prophecy very soon now a bit of math reveals that given its current stockpile of enrich, uh, enriched uranium, Iran only needs another 50 kilograms to build its first nuclear warhead. In other words, the Islamic Republic could potentially test its first nuclear bomb within three months. Now this is why the Israelis have stepped up their threats against Iran, saying that we are going to take them out. And I believe that the, the, the uh, Israeli government has a day. They know when they're going to go in. I believe that they're going to have to do this because in the last five years, there has been no progress in getting this man to stop producing this material that they know is going to be used for a bomb, which he believes he's going to use it to wipe out Israel. Now I give you more information, loads of information in my book about this and how even they said that when they launch a nuclear attack or a bomb against Israel they will have, uh, they will be victorious because they'll have so many people that will live through the explosion that they and Israel will definitely be wiped out and they'll win anyway. So this is their thinking and uh, it is it is something that we know isn't going to happen to Israel because the Lord had already told us in his word what was going to happen to the nation of Israel and uh, what was going to happen to the nations who came down with the Russian-led army that will be coming from Iran and Turkey and Libya those armies that will be uh, coming against Israel during that Ezekiel war will be killed five-sixths will be killed of the entire army. So we know that Israel's flag, Israel, the Israeli people, uh, will be standing after this war is finished. And uh, we know that even in the scriptures, we see that God tells the Jews, don't cut down any of your forests. For seven years, keep this in mind, he says for seven years, they're not to burn anything, no, none of their forests. And this is very interesting because the when the attack happens and the attack is over and Israel will be burning guess what that's the same period as the tribulation for seven years and so we believe that during this war right or right after this war the Antichrist will come out he'll make a peace agreement that we see in Daniel 9 27 the covenant that will be made between Israel and many nations and when that covenant is confirmed that will be the beginning of the seven-year tribulation and obviously we see that the uh, the commandment not to take any and burn any of the the forest uh, and the reason why they're told that is because they will be burning all of the weaponry 
that was uh, left during the Ezekiel War for seven years. So there's going to be a lot of it. So there's a lot to see and a lot to understand in prophecy, and that's why it's really important to be reading the Word of the Lord. So now, of course, I told you about the Israel being left alone. Let me get to that scripture again. Oh, I'm, excuse me, let me roll down here because it's right here. And uh, Zechariah 12.3, when it talks about Israel, uh, anybody that burdens themselves over Israel and all the people who are going to be coming against it, you'll see that the headline here report unprecedented low between the, the Israel and uh, the United States. Now, the, the same uh, idiot report may provide insight into one of those new Obama policies. Now, the newspaper reported that in recent weeks, Washington sent a message to Iran via two European nations stating clearly that the U.S. would not take any part in an Israeli airstrike on Iran and therefore requested that Iran not retaliate for such a strike by hitting American assets in the region. Officials on both sides continue to insist that relations between Jerusalem and the White House are as good as ever, which is a bunch of bull. But anyone willing to see past the, re the, the public pronouncements of politicians can see the obvious tension. And this is what I've been saying for a long time. Obama administration has two mouths. On the left side, it'll say what they want the people to believe. And on the right hand side, they know exactly the how they're coming against Israel and how their policies are making a divide between Israel and the United States. And so throwing Israel under the bus has become one of the uh, uh, common reports uh, since Obama became elected. Now let's go down here. It says this. Now concerning Israel being left alone, we're always seeing new news how people are going against Israel. Here's another one. South Africa University adopts boycott against Israel. It says the University of Johannesburg last year became the world's first university to impose an academic boycott of Israel, ending its relationship with the Ben Gurion University. The South African government angered Israel three months ago by issuing instructions that no imported goods from the Israeli settlements in the West Bank be labeled as product of Israel. And many South Africans adequate the Israeli uh, treatment of the Palestinians with the abuse of their former apartheid regime against uh, blacks. So we see other nations and other, in this case, it would be a university um, that is coming against Israel. Now, here is another one, Egypt. Now, keep in mind, Egypt is another one of those nations in the Psalm 83 war, along with Syria and Abbas, the Palestinians, and Hesarel, uh, the leader, also there, and the leader of the Hezbollah. We see that Egypt shuts down last remaining Jewish synagogue. It says the Jews have lived in Egypt for thousands of years and were able, for the most part, to be able to practice their religion. However, now this has changed. And for the first time in thousands of years, there will be no Jewish prayer service on Rosh Hashanah, which to me is really important, and I'll explain it and Yom Kippur in the synagogue of Alexander, Egypt. All right, now, <coughs> excuse me. It says, for the Jewish New Year of uh, 5,773, and according to the reports in the news media, this was the latest active synagogue in Egypt. The excuse given by the Egyptians or authorities for closing down the synagogue, effectively prohibiting uh, high holiday services. And I'll let you read the rest when you go there. Now, what is really important here is this. Rosh Hashanah, they're closing it down. This is the first time, as you saw in this article, for a thousand years that this has happened. Now, Rosh Hashanah is the next Jewish holiday that's going to occur. 
and I've told people before that when Jesus came the first time, on the very day of those holidays, those Jewish holidays, Jesus fulfilled the prophecy. On Passover, Jesus died on the very day. In the unleavened bread, they buried Jesus Christ on that very day, on that spring holiday day. And then the resurrection, that Jesus rose from the grave, just like he told his disciples that he was going to do and how we see that it was recorded in the book of John. That he said, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. You'll see it in John chapter 2. Read John chapter 2 verses 19 through 21. And then 50 days later to the very day, on that fourth spring holiday, Pentecost is what it is known, the Holy Spirit descended on those that God had chosen. And so the beginning of the church, the church was established, the Holy Spirit, the act of uh, the ingredient, if you will, when the Lord said, I'm going to send you a helper. And that helper was the Holy Spirit. And now the next, we believe that the next feast, which is in the fall, which will be the Feast of Trumpets or Rosh Hashanah, we believe that the, the Lord our God is going to pick up where he left off. And of course, that would be, have to be the Feast of Trumpets, which would be the ingathering where the Lord blows his horn. The church would be removed. And so Rosh Hashanah this year, again, is in September. And uh, it is coming up quickly. Now, will it be this September that the Lord wraps his, his church out? It just may be. I'm not giving any dates, but we should be ready just in case. And listen to me again. Just in case. I'm not saying that it's going to happen for sure because nobody knows. And this is the only, only holiday, by the way, uh, that... It happens in a 48-hour period because this festival will not start until they see the sighting of the new moon. And this is the only festival where people would not know the day or the hour because they can't know until they see the sighting of the full moon. So what I am saying is we're coming around this fall festival again. And it's only going to be a couple of weeks away. And so just be ready just in case the Lord calls us home. And so, who knows, maybe this, what's taking place in Egypt, where they're closing down the last synagogue, who knows, maybe this is going to be very, very significant this year. And uh, my heart wants to go home. My heart is calling, look, Father, I know that uh, you're close. Is Rosh Hashanah that day? And all I can say is I will be ready and I'm praying that this ministry will help you to be ready just in case this is the time period where the Lord is going to remove the church. So let's just be ready no matter when it happens. Everybody should be living their life like the Lord was coming back at any moment because we love him. Not because of a fear that we're going to miss the rapture, but because you're abiding in Christ. You want to do those things that that appease and, and makes your father smile and so shed those things that are causing you to fail because God has given you ability now through the gift of the Holy Spirit to defeat everything that the enemy wants to throw your way whether it be pornography whether it be drugs whether it be alcohol or just just uh, whatever is causing you to sin God has given you the ability by the Holy Spirit to just say, Hey, look it, get away from me. I rebuke you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Make no mistakes anymore. And make no more excuses for those mistakes because the Holy Spirit has given you all the power in the world to defeat whatever the enemy wants to throw at you. And so today, if you're looking at pornography, just look at that pornography and say this, I rebuke this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and shut it off. Don't just stand there watching this stuff. Shut it off. Do exactly what the Lord said. Show him today that you're willing to be that child that will take a stand for righteousness for your father's namesake. And God will honor that. Now as far as Israel and attacks, Gaza terrorists launched attacks in southern Israel. This just happened. And so because of that, 
And I've been warning that they're going to continue to do this and that they're doing it. We saw in the headlines today that the IAF, Israeli Air Force, struck Gaza terrorist or terror target after rocket attack. So let me just go down here again. We'll show you this article. It says, the uh, quiet Sunday morning in southern Israel was disrupted again, or once again with the a blare of the color red rocket alert siren warning of an impending attack by the Palestinian Authority Arab terrorist in Gaza. There you go. The names of those in the Psalm 83 talking about where are they? Hey, they're in Gaza. Exactly what we see in Psalm 83. The rocket and mortar attacks from Gaza resumed with the start of the school year in Israel. They don't care who they're hitting. They're going after. They, they want to kill the kids. As a matter of fact, last week I put in one of my posts that the Palestinian used a retarded boy. They beat him. They, they strapped these bombs on him. And they wanted, they gave him instructions that when you go over to the, to the, to the Jews, to the military, uh, that that you're to press this trigger and to kill yourself. And of course, we heard the rest of the story that, that the Israeli soldiers saw the boy crying and weeping, and they did not fire upon this young, retarded boy. But this is the mentality of the, the, the Palestinian Authority, is they use innocent children to do their, their work, their cowardly work, to destroy lives. Now, according to this news article, it said the warning, which came about 10 a.m., gave residents of the western Negeva towns a window of safety for some 15 to 25 seconds to race for cover before the, the, the Grad Katusha rockets made impact. So you keep watching the Middle East because they're going to have more of these attacks. And then what's going to happen? One of these days you're going to wake up, there's going to be a major campaign and I believe that that major campaign is going to end up being the Psalm 83 war. So there's a lot of the things in the news that shows us exactly those same things that the Lord warned us about. And they are coming. And if the Israelis are calling for peace and safety and these guys cannot get it together, you know that the next part, the second part of this prophecy, the sudden destruction that will be coming, is on its way and uh, we see it coming and I'm praying now that you will see it coming as well so give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ today don't wait to see if we do go under rapture uh, later on this month because we may go we may not go but just be ready to show the Lord look at I'm ready because I love you now you know, I want to do what's right for you now. Please give your life to Christ. I'd like to welcome everybody again. This is Frank DeMora with the Last Chronicles of Planet Earth getting into some more news for September the 4th of 2012. Let me go right to it. Now, first of all, let me, as always, I give you the scriptures and then I connect the dots. So let me start with Matthew chapter 24, verses 4 and 5, and this is what Jesus warns us about these last days. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my, na my name, saying that I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Now, there is an article that just showed up, and uh, the headline as you can see here, Reverend Song Young Moon is dead. He died a couple days ago at the age of 92. Now, why am I putting this up? Because the Lord warned us about people who would be claiming to be the Messiah. And you see here that the Reverend Song Young Moon was a self-appointed, proclaimed Messiah who built a global business empire. Now, there's so many people around the world that have flocked to a man who says that he is the Lord, the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And obviously, when you know Scripture, we know that when Jesus, the real Jesus, resurrected from the dead three days after the Roman Empire, or the Roman 
under the request of the Jews at that time, under the request of the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the, uh, the leaders, the religious leaders in Israel at that time, Jesus was crucified and in three days he rose up again, never to die again, right? Once and for all, that's what the Lord did for us on the cross. He died for us on that cross so that we may have life abundantly in Jesus Christ, but he only did it once. He didn't say that he's going to come back in a form of Song Young Moon and, uh, and then die again. And this just shows you what the Lord had warned us, that you eventually will see the truth. And the truth is, this man is not the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Obviously, he died at the age of 92. And uh, I just, the only thing that I would say, I pray that at his last moments, that he would have acknowledge what he had done uh, in this false teaching and would repent from it. Other than that, uh, I really have a bad feeling of where uh, Reverend Sung Young Moon would be at this particular time in his life. Because once you die, Paul said, to be absent of the body is to be present with the Lord. And if you're outside the will of God, if you're claiming to be Jesus Christ and you're not, and you're spreading false doctrine, uh, in fulfilling the words of Jesus Christ, there, then obviously only God is going to make the determination of where somebody goes after death. But um, we do know from Scripture that uh, it doesn't look very good. So now there are other people, and I do have all of these people in my book. I have Song Young Moon in there as well, showing you the different people uh, down through not only the the uh, centuries, but currently all the people are claiming to be Jesus Christ because Sung Young Moon isn't the only one. So there's a lot of people who dressed up like sheep saying that I'm Christ, but underneath you can see who they really represent, and that's the devil. So let me go into another prophecy now. This is the food crisis that we see from Revelation chapter 6, verse 6, and I'm going to tie in a bunch of these other prophecies as well, so bear with me. But it's important for us to read the word. It says, And I heard the voice in, in the middle of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And of course, when you do a study on the book Revelation, you'll see that the Lord is showing us that it's going to be horrendous times during the tribulation period. The food supply is going to diminish so bad that the, the prices will be going through the roof. People will be working all day long. This is what he's showing us here for one small meal, whether it be wheat or barley, but we do know it's going to be very, very expensive. And I've been showing you the different reasons why the food prices are going up. I've been showing you this for years, telling you what's going to happen based on the Lord's warning and everything that I'm pointing to in Scripture is coming to pass. And so the food prices continuously are going up and up, and don't, don't count on them coming down anytime soon. Now, in conjunction with this, in Luke 21, 25, the Lord said, And there will be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, huge problems. What are these problems going to be caused? By the sea and the waves roaring. So we know that and we've seen them with our own eyes. Just in the last week, we've seen Isaac, Hurricane Isaac, what it's doing and what it's been doing for the past week and all the, the huge uh, devastation that it's caused by the massive amounts of rain that has poured down, the flooding that has been coming from the storm, huge uh, number of tornadoes associated with it. And this is uh, caused complex problems, obviously, for many, many people. So, and then in Matthew 24, 7, I wanted to point out the pestilence because the Lord, we know that during the tribulation, insects will be eating the crops. We know that there'll be a combination of factors by the sun, the intense heat from the sun, the flooding that will cause destruction of crops. And obviously there's going to be other uh, factors like pestilence and there'll be wars. Uh, that will be stopping people from planting their crops as well. So there's a lot of things that are going to cause the prices for, to go up. But let me show you, there's a headline news here, and let me go right to it. Uh, once you're at my site, if you're new, and I do have new people every day that are subscribing to my YouTube channel to go over to my prophecy site where you can download my book for free, 
but uh, when you get to my site just go at the bottom of the article click the link and you'll go right to the article that I'm talking about so we have in this article from Yahoo News it says the the flooding and the locust plague add to the Chad food crisis and I'm, what I'm doing here is just giving you obviously isolated information about certain parts of the world but when you take a full spectrum of what's going on um, that's what my book is all about I'll give you all the data in my book I'll show you where these problems are occurring and uh, you'll get a, a, a really big picture of what the Lord is showing us about all of the signs that are supposed to we're supposed to look for during the last days the final generation which we know is our generation now Chad Warren Saturday at the flooding see now we're putting a different uh, prophecies together here from this news connecting those prophecies so we have flooding here uh, the vast crops or the field of crops and locusts so not only do you have Luke 21 25 you also have uh, Matthew 24 uh, Matthew 24 7 where the Lord talks about the the pestilence and so forth so we have the combination here so let me go on locust infestations had added to the severe food crisis and there you go you have shades or the road to Revelation 6 6 where food is being destroyed and when you have lack of food the first thing that happens is the price will go up so in the country already battling chronic malnutrition situation is quite worrying based on analysis of available data what this data shows us here uh, for example, it says, after the famine, the ministry is now concerned about flooding of the food crops and the locust infestation. So we had how many acres destroyed here? Well, here it's in hectares, but you'll see 632,000 acres of land that contain the variety of crops have been flooded. And when you have this kind of devastation in a place where they're already having food problems, uh, then you will really understand more so of what the Lord is showing us. And he did say we would see all of these signs. So moving down, there is a, another article, this one headline, Drought Heading uh, from Croplands to Meat Counter Near You. And of course, if you've been into my, my website for any time in the last two years, uh, and if those who have been following what I've been writing and warning about since 2007 know that uh, over the course of these years I've been telling you situation will continue to get worse and of course this is based on Mark 13 8 where the Lord told us that these signs would end up being like um, birth pain signs and this is what we're seeing happen every year they're getting worse they're not getting better and God is showing us that his word is true so let me go right to the article for you. <coughs> Excuse me. It says the worst drought to hit the U.S. cropland in more than a half a century could soon leave Americans reaching deeper into their pocket pockets and fund the luxury that people and few other countries enjoy affordable meat. And I, you know, this is I. Look, and I don't want to make my sound, myself sound more than what I am. But all I do is um, I know what the Lord wrote us. And everybody would know this if they read it. And all I am doing is showing you that his word is coming to pass. And so these many years I warned you, keep warning you, food prices will go up. And then we shouldn't be surprised to see his words come to pass. It says drought decimated fields have pushed grain prices sky high. Just Google, if you will, Frank DeMora and pri food prices to skyrocket. And you'll see probably at least 50 different posts that I've put up warning you to what was going to happen in the future. And uh, it is taking place. And if you're going to give anybody credit for this, you have to go and give Jesus Christ the credit because it, it was our Father who told us about these things. And as God's child, I am just pointing out what my father had said because I know his, he is true. And I'm trying to get the rest of the children that the Lord wants into his kingdom 
to understand and believe his word. So it says this, and the rising feed costs have prompted some livestock producers to liquidate their herds. They just can't afford to feed them anymore. And so we're in a mess. We're definitely in a mess. Now, here is a interesting, it says food prices in 2013 are expected to grow faster than normal for the fourth time in seven years. And a recent forecast from the USDA has food costs jumping as much as 4%. So we do know when the Lord tells us in Revelation 6.6 6, that people will be working all day long, you are actually seeing the news that is driving us to that point. Now, if you're a Christian, if you love the Lord, you will be ready. And when the Lord takes us out, you're not going to be involved in what's going on during the tribulation period because the Lord would have had moved you out of the way, out of that tribulation period. So the revelation warning, as you see in Revelation here in 6.6, 6, that warning for the people who refuse to, to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, it will happen just like in the days of Noah. People will be marrying, thinking uh, nothing was out of the ordinary, things are going to go on forever, and how shocked they are going to be when they find out that this uh, the rapture of the church, that doctrine was actually true, and Christians will be gone, and then they're in the midst of a seven-year period that the Lord said would never happen again. And uh, it's going to be terrible. And I'm, I'm doing my best to drag you to the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ so that you can see his true to get you to safety. And uh, there's many people who are doing the same thing that I'm doing. And we only can pray that God would touch your heart and open your eyes today. So here is a, another article that I wanted to share with you. But before I give you the article, let me show you a little uh, area from my book that I warned you about. And this is what it says. So I'm going to be quoting myself. And I just added this last article as an update to my book. But the portion that you're going to be reading up until this port part, excuse me, are uh, what I already wrote. It says here's a, a side note. Number 15 stated that there were 39.68 million American on food stamps, and also stated that the U.S. Department of Agriculture is forecasting that enrollment in the food stamp program will exceed 43 million Americans in 2011. Of course, if you go back to my post back in 2010 and 2011, I tell you that these numbers are going to go up before they were announced. And I know that what's happening, what's going on in America, and how America has fall, fallen under the curse of God because we've been going against Israel. We're trying to separate and divide Israel and give East Jerusalem back. And so we're under this curse, and I know that nothing will change unless the Americans change and we come back to Jesus Christ and we honor God and we come back to God and his precepts. And without that, there is little hope for a nation that used to be under God. And now this nation is trying to throw Jesus Christ under the bus. Now, according to an AP report on October 22nd of 2010, a record 42 million Americans are now depending on food stamps. The number shows that the U.S. is headed for a depression. And just as America was entering a halfway mark in 2011, the new stats derived via the National Center Policy Analyst, which reported that more than 44.5 million Americans received the SNAP. And, of course, SNAP is uh, the abbreviation from, for the food program. They just renamed it. The SNAP benefits uh, in March 2000, uh, March an 11% increase from one year ago and nearly 61% higher than the same time four years ago, June of 2011. Now August 4th, 2011, this is where this report came from and I'm always giving you the documentation where this news is coming from. So August 4, 2011, a CNN Money reported that nearly 15% of the U.S. population relied on food, food stamps in May, and according to the United States Department of Agriculture. 
And the number food stamps uh, shot in an all-time high to 45.8 million in May, the USDA reported. That's up 12% from a year ago and 34% higher than two years ago. Now, the Bloomberg, now this is what just came out today. You'll see that this is today's date. The Bloomberg report on September 4th, 2012 showed the number of people forced on food stamps has climbed again. Food stamps used, used reach a record 46 million point seven. 46.7 million in June. And the government said as Democrats prepare to nominate or to nominate uh, President Barack Obama for the second term with the economy as the chief issue in the campaign. So you look here from 39 Point sixty-eight millions on the food stamps all the way to the current news to 46.7 that's a huge increase in a very short period of time and of course when we're seeing food production because of the different weather patterns the flooding the intense heat and now we're starting to see because of the intense heat and we get enough rain you're making perfect conditions for insects and this watch the news because you're going to see more of this and so all of these elements combined together will cause the food prices to go through the roof so if you think that uh, things are bad now uh, all I can do is tell you this mark 13 8 is coming to pass the birth pangs that the Lord warned about they're in our face every single year and I'm praying that you begin to understand what the Lord was showing you. And so here's the headline. Headline says that the summer heat assails Galilee water level Dead Sea shrinks at the fastest pace in recent years. Now if the Lord told us in his word, let me go up there, I don't want to get you too dizzy when I'm getting to the scripture. What? I didn't, excuse me, I thought I had the scripture up there. Uh, but in the in the book of Revelation, we have the Lord showing us that intense heat was coming, lack of water, people being thirsty, people starving. And uh, you can see this when you read Revelation chapter 16 if you want. But we do know that we're on the course to seeing all these things happen. Now, let me get right to the article so that you'll understand. Here you go. It says this. It says the Sea of Galilee, Israel's largest source of fresh water, dropped by almost 60 centimeters over July and August, while the Dead Sea lost some 40 centimeters, according to the report by the Israel Water Authority released on Monday. And while the regularly rain winter provided the northern lake with much needed water and the Israel Water Authority said the lake was the fullest it has been in the past years the summer took its toll I mean it's been so hot in many many places around the world it is shrinking water levels and of course in my book I show you how in the Middle East the Lord warned us that the Euphrates River was going to run dry and the, the Chinese army the, the number of 200 million soldiers we know that they're going to be crossed the dried Euphrates River, and that's what's taking place. And all of those uh, documents are listed in my book as well. So we're seeing uh, all of the prophecies come to pass at the same time. And of course, uh, I did not give you a week's tally of all the different earthquakes. And last week I put up the red flag when the Lord speaks to my heart and says, you know, put up the red flag, warn everybody these many earthquakes and the larger earthquakes are coming again shortly uh, last week when I posted uh, the next day the earthquake started and they, they really haven't uh, stopped yet so as we see here just from yesterday you will see there's a series of earthquakes that uh, are just about all of them over five and that they're starting to give it pretty strong when they hit at five and I'll I always report on the earthquakes at least a five and uh, point zero and higher and so we're going to see more of these quakes by the way you saw yesterday there was another big earthquake and uh, Indonesia 
and you know of course we're in the 5.8 in the Philippines and uh, just scroll down when you get to my website you'll see look at this 7.6 the Philippine Islands 6.8 and so all of these things uh, are taking place in our generation so all I can say is just listen to what the Lord is saying watch the news because you're going to see the fulfillment of what the Lord warned us now let me just before this is the end of this video and I'm gonna be making more videos for today for September the 4th giving you some more information about Israel what's going on between Israel and Iran and uh, how it's leading to fulfillment of prophecy but let me uh, encourage you to be praying for America pray that God brings us back into his uh, into his fold in other words how as a nation this nation used to worship God and uh, we need guidance again we need the Holy Spirit to be infectious through America and we know that we can bring our country back we can have a leader who will bring our country back and we need prayer before the election is over so join us we have people that are already joining with us they're short prayers and every day at nine o'clock in the morning as you see here we have We'll call in, and tomorrow again we're going to be doing this, September 5th, 2012. We're going to be doing this every day until the election is over. What you do is call this number, and when you're prompted, just put in this code, 1-800-8901-POUND, and then you'll enter into the prayer conference. Now, we have allocated uh, or chosen one person to pray, and every day somebody else will be praying, and... Uh, we'll do that until the election and we can make change and Jesus told us to ask in his name and if you ask the thing that you ask we will do we need to just believe in the Lord's words and I'm, I'm encouraging you to believe and trust in the Lord now please keep in mind anyone who was elected the only reason why they are elected is because God has allowed that to take place and so you the person that you're looking at who is ahead of, of this nation or the head of Iran or the head of uh, El Salvador or Turkey or Italy wherever they are they are there because the Lord Jesus allowed them to be there to fulfill his own purpose now we may not know exactly what that purpose is but God does and all we have to know is what God shows us in his word that we should be praying for and what does he show we want to have a godly leader and that's what we're praying for so please join us the the prayer conference only takes about five minutes of your time it's not a lengthy process we're very direct we'll we'll say as a group and uh, God will I believe that he's going to honor our prayer so there you have it now for those YouTube subscribers please let everybody know that what I'm doing and uh, tell them that they can get my free book by going to my site BibleProphecyMan.com and I will be doing some other news a little bit later on today God bless